Anybody who knows me well will tell you that if tidiness and cleanliness is next to godliness, I'm Satan. And I'm kind of coming out of the closet today as a gardener and urban farmer who horrifically lost control of my south and west beds uh, when we finally got rains here late in August and into September. This used to be a, prop a very tidy propagating area with visible pots. And when the rains came, this god-awful grass, whatever it is, uh, absolutely took over. Grabbed, went over the fence. You can't even see the fence anymore. It, it robbed me of productivity in this whole area, and it, it really, really irritates me because I spent a ridiculous amount of time pulling. I'll just show just how bad it is here. Look at this. It's, it's like kudzu from hell, except it's a grass of some kind. And, of course, now it's making seeds. But I think there's going to be a happy ending to the squalor. Uh, last night I saw a remarkable documentary called Fresh at a South Tampa organic restaurant. Great overview on of, uh, rebelling against agricultural food production, food self-sufficiency at home. But one of the things that struck me re very intensely, there was a farmer, I forget his name, he's also in Food Inc. And he uh, uses uh, grass pasture land as the basis to produce uh, cow meat, eggs, pig meat, uh, turkey meat, uh, and food crops. And the basis of it is him routinely uh, herding these various animals into areas where grass grows. Now, as you can see, I opened this gate a couple weeks ago to, in hopes that the chickens would go in there and start to attack this god-awful squalor for me. They did do a pretty doggone good job here at the south end where they virtually have cleared it out down to bare soil. Uh, this over here was almost as bad as what you just saw. Uh, but starting right about there, uh, they quit doing their job. And from here on out, it's weed hell uh, that to me is a profound embarrassment as somebody who's been gardening his whole life. I mean, you can't even see the... There's, believe it or not, there's a kiddie pool in there with standing water for uh, bottom watering of plants. You can't see any of it. So here's what I'm going to try. One of my students recently gave me one of those folding gates that you use to open up like an accordion uh, to keep kids and babies out of hallways. I'm going to go ahead and open up this gate like that all the way. And I'm going to set up, after I walk around the yard, because it's a full looping path, I'm going to see uh, later today after I teach a, a gardening class here how I can shoo all the chickens into this area each and every day close the gate and they will then have no choice uh, but to buzz all this down for me. I also am going to do the same thing with these Muscovy ducks who have in two weeks time remarkably cleared out an area that was overgrown uh, not so much by that grass but by a food crop which was good, the, the, my Vigna beans, but also that damn Spanish needle, that daisy thing. And they've only been in here two weeks and as you can see it's almost completely cleared out. I'd always heard, hey, Mr. Duck, hey, Mr. Duck. I'd always heard that Muscovies are very good clearers, almost like goats. So that's the plan. Uh, the, but the biggest effect that that documentary had on me last night is I'm going to take a look at this whole yard with just a whole new mindset. I feel like I've spread my efforts too thin, hence I lose control of the weeds, uh, reduce productivity, wasted labor pulling weeds that come back anyway. And I'm going to reinvent this whole backyard based on my waterwise container gardens, of course, which is a given, because uh, I'm now gardening that way almost exclusively by drilling holes on the sides near the bottom and burying them to protect them from sunlight, but mainly on this idea of having a systematic way of herding my poultry into various areas where they can feed on the grass that they need to be healthy to make eggs rich in omega-3 fatty acids, spare me wasted uh, effort pulling weeds to no avail, and also what I'm considering doing is possibly in this big area I just panned over of taking out all the pots and I'm thinking of reseeding it with bahia grass, which I deliberately eliminated from the property about four years ago to avoid mowing. But bahia is a perennial grass here in Florida and I'm thinking that if I duplicate that farmer's efforts or try to by mimicking him, have an area of this property that is a full-blown bahia sod that say I will let reach one to two feet in height and then periodically open up gates, let in the chickens, let in the ducks, let them feed, graze it down, but not destroy it. 
and just when they've nibbled it down to the correct height, shoo them back out and let it regrow. I would strongly suggest if you're an urban farmer or thinking of being one, or simply an obsessed gardener like me, of making a point to see the documentary fresh. Um, I was surprised how big of an impact it had on me. I hope this gives you some ideas and also to let you see that despite my having gardened all my life, uh, that once again, like two other people I know, whatever this grass is, and we don't know its name, here's the texture here, whatever it is, just a few weeks of rain in late August and September, we lost utter control, uh, despite all three of households having chickens. Uh, it's going to be interesting to see for me what this place looks like a year from now because seeing fresh last night was a very powerful catalyst uh, to me as a gardener and urban farmer and probably one of the most uh, pungent catalysts I've felt in many years. Uh, it almost reminds me when I first read Bill Mollison's permaculture book in, back in the early 90s in Denver. Let me know if you get any ideas from this and if anybody can identify for me what this god-awful grass is that can be epidemic in Tampa. I'd sure appreciate it. Have a good day, y'all. Bye-bye.